Okay, in case you just joined, you're just joining us, it is the Friday edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for Up the Press, and we have been joined by Judy Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State. Good morning to you, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, Maureen, and uh, with our viewers all over the world. Thank you for having me. Pleasure having you, too. Well, uh, let's go straight and begin with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper is leading with Chicago Record. Tinubu betrayed me. I'll fight till Supreme Court's verdict. That's Atiku Abubakar. Details of that you can find on page, pages 2 and 3 of the Punch newspaper. The writers there, Tinubu supported Yaradua PDP in 2007 presidential election, says ex-vice president. Atiku's political career has ended. He got nothing from Chicago University. APC. Let's start with this one, Mr. Johnson. This. Well, um, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, go ahead. I'm this listening. case, clearly, we're not, we haven't yeah. seen the end of it. Uh, no retreat, no surrender. That's what the former VP is saying. However, APC is saying he's been on a wild goose chase. He hasn't gotten anything from his Chicago endeavor. Well, until the Supreme Court in Nigeria rules on the matter. We won't actually know the true situation of things because the outcome of the deposition and the judgment by the various courts in the United States of America concerning the status of the president as a student and concerning the certificate it was going to be subjected to different interpretations mm -hmm. by legal scholars, legal scholars with um, the highest kind of qualification you can think of, SAN, on either side. So on either side of the divide, we have had different positions being taken. Well, until the Supreme Court rules on that matter. But will the will Supreme not... Court admit it? That's another thing. Uh, will they well, admit it? it, is, it, 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 it that's not what we should be suggesting. Well, in, in, in this matter and in this situation, I think that if indeed there are no smoking guns, I see no reason why the Supreme Court shouldn't admit it. It is response, it is it, it builds on them to uh, to admit all evidence and prove beyond reasonable doubt and clear all doubts surrounding the 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 legality of the certificate the president is parading as well as a studentship, and clear this once and for all. As far as I'm concerned, it is the international embarrassment that subjected us to as a nation and as a people. And people don't know the long-run implication of it. I have a book on, pub on public relations written by one of the foremost scholars, Frisa Setter. In 2011, edition was given to me by as a birthday gift. Hmm. Now, in that book, in chapter 11, when we are talking about writing for PR, um, specifically, the author in that book said, even if a 419 guy in Nigeria can know how to write, how much more you that you are practicing PR? I, 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 next week, I'll, I'll screenshot the book. I'm, I'm after this, after, it's on my desk as we're talking now. If I'm true now, I'll screenshot it and post it online, and I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. So people don't know the implication of the need for us to put this thing. We, this issue has gone beyond politics, and the issue must 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 be clear. And all the legalese surrounding it should be explained in such a way that <clears throat> an average person should understand. And that critical role of <clears throat> the watchdog of making interpretation of clarifying issues lies with the media and i think to a large extent the media is shying away from its responsibility with How respect so? to, uh, no, with respect to letting nigeria know the true nature because just check out the way the headlines have been framed just let check out the narrative that has been given to the story for example um look at the way a uh, punch newspaper cars like tinumbu uh 
uh, I'll fight till the end. You know, the way it is, it is, it is, it is not, Tinumbu betrayed me. I'll fight till the Supreme Court. Now, you look at the way Punch reported it, it's from the point of, of, of betrayal, of political betrayal, not on the substantive issue with respect to the status of the, of, of, of the president, his educational qualification. Mm. And you take across, across media, media spectrum. So, and then the president himself needs to clear this issue, not to speak through his surrogates. He himself needs to clear this, this particular issue. As far as I'm concerned, um, whatever I say now, people will tell me to be opinion because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a judge, until, until the Supreme Court in Nigeria rules over that particular matter. And if it's not an issue in 2023, if the president, if he's successful at the Supreme Court, in 2027, it will, be, it will become a major issue. But I, I, I've shared it in within friends. Let's say there's a cloak of controversy around the nominee for a minister. Let's say this cloak of controversy is around the nominee for a minister or around someone that is meant to be employed probably as the GMD of NNPC or is meant to be employed as the MD CEO of one of the multinational corporations. What do you think the board will have done with respect to 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 to, to this particular to this particular matter? This is it's, it's become it's become something which, as a Nigerian, as a Lagosian, as an African, I, I am ashamed of. Because this shouldn't even drop to this manner. Ask me, <coughs> ask me, if I'm in the office now, if you ask me for my credentials, for all of my credentials, if I'm in the office, because it's in the office, usually, mm -hmm. I'll bring everything out. And I'll share everything with you. So this there shouldn't be too much force about about this particular. Indeed, matter, this matter are, this matter has generated lots of interest home and abroad. I mean, everywhere you go is is a topic of discussion. And yes, Punch must have taken this their headline from the question that was asked. You know, the former VP did hold a press conference um, addressing this matter, and one of the journalists there asked him a question. You know, saying he betrayed. Uh, that Tinubu, former uh, President Tinubu, helped him sometime in the past, and he's betraying him by going this route, and then he gave the explanation, which is where Punch took this from. But the VP made it clear, he was explaining, that this is about upholding the integrity of that office and has called the other presidential candidates from other parties to join him in, in this fight. And why, he won't stop why, was the story, why was the story not reported from that hand? Mm. Why was it not so that... Nigerians are no longer further confused. Why was the narrative taken from <clears throat> from the political betrayal? And I knew quite all right that uh, he said, as far as he's concerned, that there's no base of betrayal on this matter. He will pursue this particular case until the Supreme Court. And if the Supreme Court rules on the matter, he will shit his sword. He actually did say, he actually did say, just as the writer here captured, Tinubu supported Yaradua. PDP in 2007. He went back to explain that contrary to what people may have thought, that from, uh, President Tinubu did not support him back then, that he supported Yaradua, which was why Yaradua won. So he's saying it was, it's contrary to what the, the, the journalist thought, that he is the one betraying Tinubu, that in fact it is Tinubu that betrayed him in 2007. So it's, it's, it's their fight. However, as you have said, this thing has gone beyond the political uh, connotation. It's become a national embarrassment for all Nigerians. And indeed, it's something that should be trashed out so that, you know, we know what, what exactly is it? The deposition we had hoped would give more clarity. But as, as it stands today, the different lawyers from the different uh, positions are giving different explanations to it. Nigerians also are divided on it. Those who like the president are saying, oh, he did not this, he did not that. This is what the deposition says. And those who do not like the president are saying, well, let me not say do not like the president. Others are saying, no, it shows that he forged the certificate he presented to INEC. It shows that the secondary school he claimed that he attended, he didn't attend it. It shows that... so. It's just going here and there. It's all over the place. And it's so embarrassing for the nation, as you have said.
Yeah, um, it's, it's some, some, some certain facts are, are clear. Some certain facts are clear. And these facts are not something which just came up now. They came up 20, 20, 20, 24 years ago, precisely. Some of these facts are in the public domain. Now, what you require now to make them become the truth, the acceptable fact, is the courts in Nigeria ruling or accepting some of the facts in the deposition got in two days ago as becoming fact. Because it's, it, 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 it's clear that there are issues that are raised by that deposition. And I have said it. If this issue was raised concerning a nominee for the VC of Unilag hmm. or for the VC of, of, of UNN or the VC of Bayer University, if these issues were raised concerning such nominee, what do you think will happen to such nominee? Definitely it will be it's, dropped. It's there. It, yeah. it's, it's, but what it's also not, do you say? As what someone, also? As, as someone in academics, it is very clear. Hmm. If someone has this baggage and the baggage is not clear and the person is seeking an admission, the person will not get an admission. It's mm -hmm. clear. There's no need for us beating beating around around the bush and it's it's as far as i'm concerned it is more or less like shooting oneself in the foot because in 2019 the supreme court so watered down the qualification for the office based on their interpretation that if you present anything and you say it is equivalent to school sat it becomes it becomes it becomes you know we, we so lower the bar with Buaris and um, with Buaris, Buaris nomination and issues surrounding the certificate, <clears throat> whether is it certificate or not certificate, and loss of certificate and presentation, it got to the point that Waek reproduced a certificate with the image of the president. We are as <laughs> I that graduated before the president, after the long after the president graduated from school, my certificate does not even have my. Picture. My, 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 my passport photograph mm -hmm. on it. So you, you, it, has, it has become so ridiculous. Yeah, that was that legendary. That was legendary. People, but what do you people, say? People. What do you say of those who say that this whole uh, sh Chicago State University certificate thing is a major distraction and should be thrown aside so that we can move the country forward? No, 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 no. no. They are playing. We'll do whoever that has seen. They have been economic with the truth the, the, but the bottom line is that whatever claims if you make a wrong claim to an office that's you are laying a wrong foundation there's nothing you can build on foundations of life these are eternal principles there are some principles that cannot so beneficiaries of the system will be telling you that no it doesn't make any sense less is true but the old this country went went agog with hysteria. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, to a large extent, you can even call it hyperbolic hysteria when a young girl forged, allegedly, forged a jam resource. Mess jam up. Start, uh, and, then, and then everybody had a comment. The National Assembly looked into the matter. The chairman, uh, the jam um, registrar Called the press conference and the issue even further heightened the divisions between the two major ethnic groups in the southern part of Nigeria. So, as far as I'm concerned, he that lives in glass houses must not throw stones. It mm. is very, very clear that whoever wants to lead us must be clean and crystal clear, like a glass, not having any spot or wrinkle on him. So. With this, this matter, as far as I'm concerned, this matter, I'm looking at it with the way my children will be treated in future, with the way <clears throat> my grandchildren will be treated, with the way I will be looked at as, as a Nigerian. One of the things I took out of the deposition, because there's no need to play into the gallery on this particular matter, hmm. is when the registrar said it is a Nigerian thing hmm, yeah. Yeah. to watch. It's clear. There are some things that are very, very clear. One, the certificate 
the president paraded was not issued to him by the school. The school have found that, well, Bola A. Tinungu graduated from their school. The one from, um, um, what is the name of this, Richard Daly School, Southwestern College. Mm. So, that the question concerning the gender can only be answered by Southwestern College. Well, that was that was a typographical error or not? And then there are elements. There are elements in the certificate presented by the president to INEC that does not reflect or represent what it's in the same version of the certificate of uh, Chicago State University. And so <clears throat> if you put that together it is very very clear and then i have seen the video not was told because as a journalist and teacher of journalists i belong to the fourth estate of the realm mm -hmm. which is an institution of order not disorder there is an institution of order is an institution of checks and balances is the one that is meant to hold people accountable i have heard the president himself during the course of the in chatham house where he said that the school issued him certificate yeah on the basis of fidelity on the basis of trust hmm. look we have had we have we are we are required people in the past with questionable credentials to 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 throw the part of honor and dignity and those that refuse to do the part of honor and dignity were were, 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 through the instrumentality of the state, were asked to, 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 to take their lead. So that's why on the way I started. Look, this matter is before the Supreme Court. Let, within the next 45 days, the Supreme Court will rule on the matter. Let's listen to what um, the, the, the courts in Nigeria will say concerning the matter. And whatever the courts in Nigeria says concerning the matter, whatever the outcome, I think that both parties should accept whatever the outcome. That if it favors the president, people should allow, all Nigerians should join and, and support him to complete his, 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 his tenure. His tenure. If, it's, if, if, it's, if it's otherwise, then there's a need for us to, to, to start all over again. However, one thing we must take clear out of it is that those that have clamored for the breaking down of INEC into various bodies, there must be a body, a body that screens credentials of that we do the proper screening of candidates mm. so that we don't face this kind of problems again. That what due diligence when it comes to since, due since due INEC diligence, cannot do it. Since INEC, because we have encumbered INEC with a lot of responsibility. So there's a need for us to look at electoral reforms so that those that we are elected into higher office, we also have higher responsibility, we have higher integrity, and we present the, 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 kind, the, the right level of trust and credibility that is, that is required. And there's the need for this constitutional amendment. The one that you must present is Kusat and its equivalent. I think we need to look at that constitutional amendment and resolve this particular matter. And then all issues, all litigations concerning electoral matters should be resolved before swearing in. Mm -hmm. And because there's no doubt, like some have argued, this is a major distraction. Yeah. It's a major distraction for the president. It's a major distraction for the country. It's a major distraction for every one of us. Because instead of governance in, in the last in the last 100 days plus, focus has are, 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 uh, 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 has been on litigations, clouds surrounding the legality or illegality no, of the president, the credentials the president presented for, mm -hmm. for, 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 for his election, and it's across the state, even across across the 36 states of the 29 states actually, where we had elections, and then even for the National Assembly members, they are still facing litigation. So at the National Assembly, we are still National Assembly members are still facing litigation. As of Assembly members are still facing litigation. <coughs> and then the, the president is still facing litigation. Governors that were elected 
on in March are still facing litigation. Now, for almost for almost six months within the four years tenure which they have, you'll be facing litigation. What time would you now have for to governance? Focus. And I think that there's a need there's a need there's a need for us to to, to review this particular Just as this uh, particular uh, Lisa Bakoba had advised, you know. Just yeah, as uh, Olisa so Bakoba is saying had advised. Yeah, so that we can we can we can really face we can really face governance and we can hold these people accountable to the promises they made while they were campaigning for public office. All right, let's move on. Above the master, you have depots deserted as petrol landing costs hit seven hundred and twenty naira a liter. <clears throat> well, um, there's no doubt. There is no doubt that um, that issue of first subsidy removal or non removal of first subsidy and the unified exchange rate of the dollar will be revisited. Um, like I said last week, um, and I've said over time, sometimes making progress might mean you retracing your step. Mm -hmm. No matter how long you travel on the wrong path, you'll never get to your destination. Now, um, it, on this particular matter, I think that there is a need for the president and his economic team to have a rethink and look at what is there to be done. Look, some of the things that were done that really caused a major disruption and dislocation of the economy when the president came in his inaugural speech um, to cardinal policies of his administration was, was read out during his inaugural speech. That's one, removal of first subsidy, two, um, unified exchange rate. And then also by the actions, the next thing the president did was to go after, or the administration did, let me put it in that perspective, was to go after the regulators of the monetary policies in Nigeria. The central bank governor, as we speak, is still under custody uh, allegedly is resigned and then um, a new governors even the deputy governors themselves also devolved resigned a new governor of the central bank has been sworn in and new deputies they've been nominated confirmed and have been uh, have resumed have resumed their duty in the central bank so if you look at that those actions caused a major disruption and if add to it that it took the president up to the 60th day that was allowed by the constitution with respect to him sending his nominee for minister. So for a long while, our monetary policy was floating because there was no <clears throat> substantive central bank governor. And then the fiscal policy was also struggling, struggling because there was no economic team in place. There was no Minister of Finance and Minister of Budget and the rest of it in place for almost, for more than 60 days after resumption of the president. So there are some basic principles. If you add one plus one, it's, 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 it's two. So the, the effect we are seeing in every sector and in every strata of our economy and that there were decisions that were taken. Those decisions, though necessary, but were taken in a haste without having an adequate understanding of the true nature of the problem. That look, the president has never held public office after 2007. That's for a fact. The last time he held public office was in 2007. Hmm. And then he assumed the presidency. Um, 16, 16 years after. And without having an understanding of the workings, of the trappings of public governance, after leaving office for 16 years, he took some certain policies. And some people were applauding. And we, some of us said, no, the president needs to have a full clear. Oh, what we have said concerning that matter is in the public domain that anybody can assess any time. We discussed this particular issue on this particular program at exception. So it's very clear that those that we elect into public office must understand one, they are elected for a four year for a four year 
Tam. For the four years at Tam. And there are four years to plan. And every day counts. And it's important for them to understand that they are long term. Get all the necessary that will guide you in your decision making. Indeed. Decision making is aided by intelligence. Intelligence is information gathering and making sense of the information you have gathered. It is not subjected to your whims and your caprices. It is not subjected to your emotion. Public governance is not by emotion or by feelings. Mm. And it is as a result of the emotions and the feelings and the euphoria surrounding that that we have found ourselves in this. It's yeah, and, and Naira is said to be one of the worst performing currencies on the continent right now. That's according to the World Bank. Now, let's move forward to, uh, and look at the other uh, topics, uh, on, on the other headlines on the Punch newspaper. Just beside that one which you're talking about, still on the Punch newspaper, Manufacturers experiencing toughest period in history. That's according to the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. We've been talking about this. A lot of them have closed shop. A lot of them have had to sack people. The devaluation of the currency is not helping matters at all. Manufacturers experiencing toughest period in history. Ministry of the Works Ministry seeks 217 billion naira to repair 260 roads. And on the front page, you have the picture of the vice president uh, along with uh, labor leaders uh, as they marked teachers yesterday, you know, being the 5th of October, uh, the annual celebration of teachers in Nigeria and across the world. NUT demands more reforms, teachers to undergo internship. Uh, details of that you find on the inside of the Punch newspaper. All right, so we're going to move on from there to the next newspaper, the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with silence guns, not trade. They are big story. Africa's entrapped trade corridors worsen AFC FTA implementation. You find that details of that on pages four and five of the Guardian newspaper. They always do this. They they have their big story, and then they give us very very um, beautiful pictures with summaries. You have. Um, each country's top exports in Africa, highlighted here. If you get a copy of this paper, you see all of that. And the list of junta led states, Burkina Faso, Chad, Guinea, Mali, Niger, Gabon, and Sudan. Then you have, um, they are saying here that Africa traded less with itself than other world regions in 2022. That is definitely not a good record. Intertrade has been a major issue on the continent. I wonder why it continues even to 2023. Judah Johnson, what, what say you well, um, over this? We have, we, have, we have argued, and some have argued, even before us, the, the leading lights, the leading scholars in Africa have argued that for Africa to truly have economic emancipation, for Africa to be truly independent, there must be collaborations and not competitions among African countries. There must be an economic integration. And for you to get to some countries in Africa, you might need to travel to Europe Definitely. and then join a connecting flight to connect with, with Africa. The way it's been structured and the way the colonial is structured, it, if the colonial is structured it more than 60 years ago, um, 63 years ago, 65 years ago, what has African countries done with respect to bringing about economic... That is a billion-dollar question. What has AU done? What has uh, yeah. ECOWAS done to, to fix this? It's just, yeah. we've been talking about this over and over again, and it's just so disheartening to see that this has persisted. Yeah, and, and then you see African countries going to, going to Russia for Russian summit, going to Washington for 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 US African summit. Africans are treated a continent is treated as one nation. That's the way they treat us. When people want to refer to us, they refer to us as Africans. They're not Nigerians when it comes to and it's important for Africans to wake up because more than to thought, in fact three quarter of the natural resources in the world comes from Africa. And there's a need for that integration to take um, to take to take place, it's, it's important. If that's no that economic integration, look. If, for example, if you want to go for vacation, 
where would it be best for you to go for vacation? To go to the to, to the cold regions of, of Western Europe or America, or to go to the beautiful um, safaris in Uganda, in Kenya, in Tanzania, and then to enjoy the the, 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 the warmth and the beauty of, of of the of the coastline of South Africa or West Africa. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's a need for African leaders to really look in the world. They say charity begins at home. Development does not trickle down from the top. Development starts from, from, from the bottom. You build it up from bottom, from bottom up. So for African and African countries to really develop, there's a need for us to build infrastructure that leads African countries together. I see no reason why there shouldn't be any road network linking Nigeria to the to, to West Africa and linking Nigeria to Central Africa through Cameroon and linking other Africans, we co connected together with with, 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 with with one with one another. So we always have these challenges until we have visionary leaders and leaders that have come up with that idea. You knew what happened to them. You mm -hmm. knew what happened. Mama Gaddafi. You know what happened to Kwame Nkrumah. You know. You know what happened to Mama Gaddafi. You know what happened to Patis Lumumba. You know, um, you know what happened to uh, Patis Lumumba. You know, all this, all this visionary, all this visionary leader. Even if you listen to speeches given by Tafa Balewa, you, you till date, you will be feeling goose goose pimples in in, in your body hmm. with with the eloquence, with 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 the policy trust of. I recall one that. Where he went to United Nations and said Nigerian we stand on its own, we not rely on the colonial masters and we decide whoever we want to relate with as as, as a country. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the crop of leaders we have in the sixties in Africa and look in terms of their intelligence, in terms of their exposure, in terms of their education, in terms of their nationalism, and you look at the crops of leaders we have now, you would know that rather than going forward. In actual sense, we are going backward mm. in terms of quality, in terms of intelligence, in terms of character, in terms of competence, and in terms of certificate. <laughs> you just had to drop that. <laughs> All right, Julia Johnson, time will not permit us to continue without the press, but you've said, you've said beautifully, uh, spoken beautifully well today, as always. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maureen. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. And same, and same to our viewers all over the world. Thank you. Judah Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, has joined us in Lagos and of the press. We'll be back in a moment with our very, very first hot topic, the Naira, the major issues. How did we get here? From grace or from grass to grace. Let's talk about that on our very first hot topic. <laughs> 